did you know that whilst you are going through the trauma, because it is trauma of narcissistic abuse, that you will go into four different types of trauma responses in your body because of the narcissist. And in this episode, I want to give you really a deeper understanding of what goes on in our own body when we are in that narcissistic relationship. Because I'm a big believer that if we can educate ourselves to understand why we feel the way that we do, it will really help maybe lift any shame or guilt or criticism that you feel upon yourself. And maybe you're saying the same kind of phrases I used to say to myself about being weak, being stupid, feeling not good enough, feeling worthless, unlovable, that I don't matter and I'm not important. All of these really, really factor into trauma responses that happen at your deep nervous system level. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you all of those four trauma responses and how that actually transcends into types of human behavior that we will have with regards showing up like that too. So I'm Caroline Strawson and I'm a somatic trauma therapist and coach helping you move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth after the trauma of narcissistic abuse. I've been exactly where you are right now and I'm right by your side in the trenches helping you get educated, be inspired and to know that there is a light at the end of that tunnel. And if you're a new watcher, please hit that subscribe button and that little bell so that you don't miss any of my episodes that I drop in every single week because I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be in that dark tunnel feeling like there is no light at the end of it and feeling very, very alone. And I don't want you to feel like that. I don't want you to feel like that for a minute longer than you have to. So from this day forward, I want you to know I'm right there with you. You are not on your own in any of this. So why is it then we respond in certain ways with the narcissist? Because how we are actually built as human beings, we have a biological survival response to stay safe, to stay alive, and to be in the least amount of pain. So that means moving us away from what our system thinks is maybe even more pain. Now, I know many of you watching right now will be in pain, and I'm not disputing that at all. But I want you to start to get curious, because I want you to know that where you are right now in that pain, your inner system still thinks it is less painful than something else. You know, all of those responses and behaviors that you are showing up as are because your system thinks if you weren't showing up like that, it would be more painful and maybe even more dangerous for you. And this really comes down to how our nervous system actually perceives what is happening in our environment because it's always scanning for these cues of safety and cues of danger. Now, many of you watching, I hope, will not be in actual danger. That's not to say the narcissist isn't challenging. And of course, if you are in actual danger, please seek out local support with all of that with the relevant um, authorities. But most of us going through narcissistic abuse, on average, we're not in any actual danger, yet our bodies are literally stuck in trauma responses. So what are these trauma responses then? Fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. The fawn is the fourth trauma response that we talk about when we talk about, about narcissistic abuse. And in this episode, I'm gonna go through each of those trauma responses for you, and I'd love to know, what can you recognize with these? How does that show up for you? Because the fight, flight, freeze, and fawn responses are very much inbuilt within us, within what we call our autonomic nervous system. Now, our autonomic nervous system really tells the story of our past experiences. You know, my ex-husband, for instance, he's never changed behaviors. He's still, he's still a covert narcissist now as when we were married. But why is it then I can now, I could be around him, I could speak to him, I could get an email or a text from him without literally going into a trauma response in my body. I'm able to stay very safe and very feeling connected, still dealing with the challenge. And to explain all of this, I'm gonna bring in what I call my trusty 
traffic lights of tolerance. Now the traffic lights of tolerance really help you gauge where you are in your nervous system so that you can start to recognize where you are and start to get curious as to why. So the green light is really where we want to be living our life and the green light is really what we call your true self, your authentic self, so that you know if you are in the green light it does not mean there aren't challenges in your life. Let's be clear because you know life isn't like that. We do have challenges but when you're in the green light, you're still able to cope with those challenges effectively because your system is still recognizing that it's not actually dangerous. Let me give you an example. If I asked you to hold an ice cube, for instance, after a period of time, it's going to get painful. It's going to start to hurt. But I can stay in the green light holding that ice cube, and it, this is where we call our ventral vagal system, okay, it's part of our vagus nerve, which is our parasympathetic nervous system. So I can hold this ice cube, still know that I'm safe, even though it is painful. So it doesn't mean I have to go into a <gasps> fight flight response in response to holding an ice cube. I can feel the pain of the ice cube, but still know that I am safe. And that is what we call being in the green light, when you're in ventral vagal, you feel safe, you feel connected, it's our social engagement system. Now the moment as we're scanning for those cues of danger, we perceive, key word here, because we're not talking actual danger, remember, when our system perceives threat and danger, we then shift into our yellow light, and this is representative of fight, flight. So the fight, flight response is when our body then becomes flooded with cortisol, in anticipation of that danger, in case we needed to fight or we needed to run away. And if you look behind me, you can see my little figurines in the background. They represent fight, flight and freeze. And I have them up there to remind me of all of that too. So the yellow light is the fight and the flight, which of course, if we were an antelope being chased by a lion, we're gonna need to go into the fight, flight response. We're gonna need that cortisol in our body, literally going all to the extensions of our limbs, for us to fight or for us to run away. But why is it then if we're in the narcissist company or something happens, we flood our body with cortisol, feeling like we want to fight or run away, but actually we know that there is no danger. Why does that happen? And very often our perception of danger as human beings is their behavior is representative that maybe I'm not good enough, or I'm unworthy, or I'm not important or unlovable. And this always comes from our past interpretation of our childhood experiences. Now, if you think about us, if we were an antelope, if we were in fight flight, we literally would be fighting physically, or we would be running away. But the human behavior element of this might be anxiety, it might be anger, it might be showing up as controlling. Lots of different human behaviors or as protector parts as I call them, because I do a lot of internal family systems in what I do, that will show up in that yellow light to try and protect you from feeling even more pain. So when we go into these involuntary biological responses like fight flight, we're not consciously doing that. Our system has the narcissist behaving in a certain way and our system's like, <gasps> because it's reminding and triggering you maybe of a past wound of maybe like not feeling good enough or worthy. So what happens is you blend with those protector parts like anxiety, like anger, like maybe um, you might be more controlling at that particular point um, as well. And that is in that yellow light, we produce more cortisol because it's trying to protect us in that moment. It's not a conscious choice or decision. So if you're showing up in very mobilized energy protector parts and you're feeling a lot of shame on that, amen to your system because it's doing the best job to try and keep you safe based on interpretation of past experiences. It's not your fault, okay? Granted, they could be destructive behaviors and you are exhausted with all of this, I, I understand that. But your system is trying to do the best job. And if it's still perceived threat and danger, it moves into the red light then, which is our freeze and our fawn trauma responses, okay? Literally, we wanna go small. If you're an antelope, you'd wanna go small, away from maybe the lion, because then the lion might not see you or anything too. 
And it might be representative of dissociation, maybe of numbing out, maybe isolating yourself. And then fawning is really appeasing and people pleasing the abuser. Because if I'm fawning and people pleasing the narcissist, then surely then they're going to dial down their abusive behavior because I'm doing everything I possibly can. Now, all of these fight, fight, freeze and fawn, okay, isn't necessarily physically fighting, physically running away, even physically freezing and acting like you are dead, the fight, flight, freeze and fawn response for human beings are things like anger, anxiety, dissociation, numbing, isolation, people pleasing, appeasing. All of these are trauma responses to your system's perception of danger coming from narcissistic behavior. Now it's not the narcissist as such, causing the trauma responses in the body. It's the narcissist behavior and your interpretation of the narcissist behavior because their behavior is triggering old wounds that you have. So what we want to be is in this green driving seat because whether we're then in yellow or red in a fight, flight, freeze or fawn, if the narcissist was here, they aren't changing their behavior. But where would we rather be on that traffic lights of tolerance? In green, dealing with a narcissist, in yellow, dealing with a narcissist, or in red. Now, if we're in these and we're pumping out a lot of cortisol, that's going to lead to things like disease and illness. And again, many people that I work with, I have my free community on Facebook, the Narcissistic Abuse and Trauma Recovery for Women, free support group, come and join. The link will be in the, in the notes below for you to go and do that so you know you're not on your own. I see so many women in that group suffering with things like IBS, autoimmune disorders, particularly things like fibromyalgia, where there's no definitive test for fibromyalgia. It's do you have X, Y, Z? And if you do, then we're going to diagnose you with fibromyalgia. I've worked with many people who have had things like these autoimmune disorders. And once we process that trauma through the body, very often what happens is a lot of those disease and illnesses start to dissipate. Now that's not to say don't do this in conjunction without speaking to your healthcare provider, but so many of these things are symptoms of trauma. They are symptoms of the trauma that your body is responding to in the yellow and the red light because it's taking you back to painful childhood wounds. Now these painful childhood wounds may well have come from things like neglect or even childhood abuse, but equally they can come from maybe having an unemotional parent and maybe having parents who got divorced, maybe bullying at school. And these all might seem reasonably minor to an adult when you look back, but a child in those situations will always need a reason for that. And all children point back to themselves. My parents are getting a divorce because of me. I'm being abused because of me. I'm being bullied because of me. My father, my mother, they aren't praising me or showing me love, it must be because of me. That's what children do. Even though as adults, we can look back and see a totally different story. This is why trauma is not always just about the brain. It's in the body. This is why it's all to do with our nervous system because it gets wired in, literally, viscerally, at a steep somatic level in our nervous system because our nervous system will tell that story because if we are reacting in any given moment and we're going into the yellow or the red light, it's because our system perceives threat and danger. If we know there isn't any danger, then what we want to do is get really, really curious about what is the root cause for my system to perceive threat and danger right now. And very often it's going back to those old negative childhood beliefs that we think about ourselves. And when I work with my clients, say with brain spotting, somatic experiencing, IFS and EMDR, it's not the events or the person that we're trying to process, it's the person's and my client's individual perception of their behavior and what it says to them about themselves. I'm not good enough. I'm not important. I'm unworthy. This is why with the narcissist, the narcissist will never ever change. But what I want for you is for you to stay in the green light with the narcissist's behavior as opposed to perceiving their behavior scratching the scab off some old childhood wound that you have and we can do this in lots of different ways but it really has to be a lot of embodiment work when we think about things like this as well so if you think about those trauma responses that we have in our body fight flight freeze and then fawn 
people pleasing, okay, dissociation, numbing, appeasing, anger, anxiety, controlling, you know, more mobilized energy types of behaviors which come here, and then the ones where we don't have any energy and it feels exhausting in that red light, we are showing up like this, not because we are weak or stupid, we are showing up like this because our system is going, whoa, this is dangerous. So I want you to know there are no bad parts of you. There are only protector parts showing up for you in these trauma responses to try and stop you from feeling something that your system thinks would be way too painful for you to feel. And of course, as a child, it would have been painful. But as an adult, I know you could still cope with the narcissist behavior. Doesn't mean it's nice. It doesn't mean still in that green light you don't think, oh, that's not very nice. I get it. But what we want to see is the narcissist behavior is no reflection of you, never because of you. Recognizing it is challenging, but you are in a completely different system state within your nervous system in your body. It doesn't perceive it to be dangerous anymore because it's not reminding you of wounds that you have had from your childhood. So let me know how much of your life are you living in the green light, in the traffic lights of tolerance, which is our ventral vagal part of our nervous system, the yellow light, which is our sympathetic nervous system, more mobilized energy, things like anger and anxiety, or in the red light where we feel really tired and exhausted, that's our dorsal vagal shutdown, people pleasing, fawning, appeasing, dissociating, numbing out, isolating. Let me know. What protector parts are showing up for you here? What percentage of your life are you living in a trauma response? I probably lived most of my 30s in a red light, in the freeze response, in a dorsal vagal shutdown. I was still functioning, I was still taking my children to school, but I was actually in freeze. So let's get curious about this. Why is it, if you're not in any actual danger, why is it we're feeling these trauma responses in our body of fight, flight, and freeze? And let me know, because you know what? My wish for you is for you to be here in that green light, because I know how transformational it is. That doesn't mean we don't dip in here now and again, because we're human beings at the end of the day, and I do. But the majority of my life, I, I am in my ventral vagal, green light, living as my true self, recognizing there's still challenges out there, but recognizing they're never as a reflection of me. They are mere projections of other people's wounds onto me. And that's the difference. How do I receive other people's projection of their own wounds? So let me know, where are you in your traffic lights of tolerance? Please know that you are not on your own in any of this. I am right there by your side. And you know, the reason why I do all of these is so that you can get educated, so that you know we can lift that shame associated with the trauma of narcissistic abuse, and you can move from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. Mwah. Lots of love to you and see you on the next episodes.